Hey there everybody, Aaron Rath from Rats Tesla. I got some new merch that I'm creating and testing out. But today we are here to change up something that we've installed in the past. We got a screen from a different vendor, um, but today's product is from our friends at TMA. And I'll have a link to everything in the description down below, along with discount codes, so you can save some money. But today we are going to take out this screen that we have in the car and that I've really liked. It's done a really good job. Um, it's, it's a lot of, it's, a, it's everything that I want it in a screen. But today we're gonna take this screen out and we are going to change it out and make it Apple CarPlay. So we have a new touch screen and a new chip assembly to put in this so that we can make this into Apple CarPlay. So I'm gonna take a few minutes off camera and remove this out of the car because it really isn't too hard. I'll put a video or I'll put a link up above to the video where I installed this. So if you wanna see how it's installed, you can check that out. But taking it out shouldn't be too hard. I'm just gonna have to pop the dash a little bit here and then change the steering wheel and pop it out. But I'm gonna do that off camera and then I will see you inside to change out the pieces parts inside of the screen itself to make this touch screen an Apple CarPlay. Okay, so we got the screen out of the car and this is what comes in the kit. So in the kit, you get a new screen and you can see here, it's got the two ribbon cables on here that we're gonna have to be very careful when we remove these and we'll talk through that, but you wanna be very careful when you remove these. So in case you wanna put the old screen back in, these are very fragile and they go in a certain way. So we'll talk about that. And then it also comes with the new board like i said this the the screen makes it touch screen and this adds apple carplay in there so you can see the two spots where the two cables are going to go the bigger one there the smaller one there and then this is the new speaker attached so we're going to get this taken apart so that we can um we can get the new one put in Okay, so this is the back side of the screen, or this is the screen itself. You can see here's the screen. This one is not the touch screen, so this is pretty simple. On the back here, first off, we have this cable. We'll have to get this cable out, and I've got to figure out where the pry points are inside there to take this little cable out. And I'm just using a little uh, screwdriver kit that I got from Harbor Freight, a little Pittsburgh kit, and it's pretty cool. So we're gonna try and pry this plug out here. And it looks like it's just got push points on either side that's holding it in. Don't wanna break it, because they don't give you a new cable. All right, so you just gotta kinda work it back and forth to get it un disconnected from there. Then along the top side here, you have three tiny Phillips screws that we're going to take out, just using our little screwdriver kit here. Take these out, now don't lose these because the new kit does not come with these. So you're gonna wanna be very careful. They are super tiny and I'll see if you can even see it in my hand. I mean, you can see how tiny they are, so don't lose these. So we'll set those aside and continue to take out the other two. Okay, so as I was trying to pop this loose, I noticed that on this side, there's a little sticker and under that sticker is one more little screw that you need to get out. So you're gonna have to peel that sticker back. It's a quality control sticker and then take that screw out. And then once you have that screw out, 
and then on the other side as well there's this little QC sticker so they they quite curiously covered up two screws that you need to remove so there are five different screws to remove to get this screen off once you have those five screws out it'll just pop right out so um, so there's there's three screws along the bottom along the bottom here and then there's two screws up top once those screws are out this just lifts out nice and neat now we've got some screws that hold the screen in place down here there's two screws that hold this this screen in place they go to this part right here um, can't get it to come into focus but they go right there so first thing we need to do is very carefully remove this board So this board just slides right out and you want to twist it real carefully and there's a connector right here up top and that's like an antenna connector so we're going to just use a little screwdriver and you just want to pop underneath in the back side of that and it'll just pop right off you can see how it just popped right off so underneath the front part here and I don't know if you can see this very well but this black piece lifts up once that lifts up you'll see that the cord or the cable just pops right out so now the board is loose now we can take out the the old screen set the old board to the side and then there's two screws that hold the screen in we're just going to take those out and these are a little bit bigger than the other screws that we took out so you want to be careful and set these to the side set them to the other side so that you don't um, use the wrong screws in the wrong spot once you have those two screws out there's just kind of some push pins here one on each side and you just want to push those down and through and then this screen will will slide on out so here's the old screen not touch screen and the new screen right here is touch screen so now when you put this back in you want to make sure that you face it forward right you want to make sure the screen is facing in the right direction so we're going to carefully slide these cables through here these ribbon cables through here and we're going to get to the back side and just push it down a little bit want to make sure these ribbon cables are through all the way and they're not in the way and you just want to check it on the front and on the back to make sure that they're in place once you have those through it'll look like this we are not screwed in yet so let's go ahead and screw the screen down and then we'll get the board connected and the new uh, ribbon cables so just slowly screw these in remember this is plastic so you don't want to over tighten it so that you strip this plastic out you just want to put it in until you feel a little tension and then stop it's not going anywhere there's nothing that's going to um, break so you just want to be very careful now we have our new board now we're going to take these plastic connectors and and lift them up I don't know if you can see that this little black piece on that connector they just slide up and that allows them to lock into place so what we're going to do is this board will go in like this with the with the chipset facing the rear so what we're going to do is we just lifted those up and I don't, I don't know how to show this you're just going to kind of put that black piece of the tape of the ribbon cable in there and it takes three hands so um, push it in there very gently and then push the black piece down and you see how that locks it into place and then we're going to do the same thing with this smaller one push the the blue part of the tape in and then push the black uh, tension plate down now this will slide in like this so two things we need to make sure of one we need to make sure the speakers to the back side and two we also need to hook up this little other little cable here so that'll just go on the front part right here and 
it just kind of pushes on it's just a metal connector just line it up and push it down and it locks into place so then take the board and slide it down in there remember there was nothing holding that in place oh want to make sure your speaker's not trapped there was nothing holding that board down and in place so it's just going to go like that and then the speaker has a little um, sticky tape around it and we're just going to take that oops, I want to make sure we get that down in there get that speaker lined up and in place and it'll just pop into the old speaker location so that's what it looks like when we have it all put back together now we need to put the metal plate back on and that's just as easy as setting it down and putting these five screws back into place so we'll get those five screws put back into place then we'll get this put back in the car and we'll show you how it operates once you have it installed then you have to go through and set everything back up again and in the video that i have linked it'll show how to change all of these and what they do so i'm not going to really walk you through all of this but just know that you need to go set all of this up again and all of this is is uh able to be um, changed on the screen and you can see there's the new screen it looks a lot different than the old one and we haven't set up the apple carplay yet so we'll get to that but right now i just want to kind of go through and make sure everything's working and it has a front camera switch i do have the front camera on mine so uh, the last thing i'm trying to set up here is the auto brightness on the old one okay so i have it set to follow then so then everything is set up so now we've got to go uh, make sure that everything's working so this is a touch screen so you can see that it says um i touched it and it says i have to uh, pair it with bluetooth so right, it won't do it with the door open you have to close the door once the door's closed you touch the screen now we need to go into bluetooth on my phone and get this connected so we'll do that real quick on the phone and it says to look for car kit 9044 so we go to my phone it's right there so we click that and it'll run through and it asks for the the pairing code which it gives to you there is triple zero so it's not super secure um, and then we hit pair and now you can see on the screen it says connecting on my phone it gave me the option to use carplay we're going to hit use carplay you'll see that went away and see what happens when we touch the screen now it still says connecting now it went blank and now you can see that it has loaded the carplay and it's loading it it's got everything we want on the side but here's the trick right is now just like when we had a, a different screen in here this screen will play through the speaker that's on there so if i were to pick like sirius xm right here i can't yet because it's loading so let's let it load and then we'll get back into working this in terms of so now i have the carplay loaded and, and it's working and your volume works and it shows you the volume on there i really like that but the key to this is is right now i'm playing sirius xm and i'm just playing some random station but it's playing through the speaker down here in order to get it to play through the speaker here you need to open this up and go into your bluetooth and now you'll need to add a new device and it'll look you start the search and it's going to find that car kit 9044 again so you click that it'll add that device it confirm the number and that that is the correct number so um all that's there is cancel so it didn't let me do that so we'll go through this again and again car kit 9044 so 
turned on. Well, it didn't. It didn't load it there. So sometimes this process takes more than um, takes more than one try. <laughs> hey, this is Aaron from the future. Um, I recorded the video, the earlier part of the video this morning and before I got to editing it I figured two things out that I wanted to drop in here in the middle uh, right before we close out that video so that uh, I answer a few questions the first one was I mentioned in the video that in the past I'd used CarPlay devices like this and I had problems with them shutting off uh, in the car so that my phone would then connect to Wi-Fi in my house. Well, I'm happy to report I've tested it multiple times today, and every time I leave the car, this one shuts down, and my phone connects to the Wi-Fi once I walk into my house. So this one does completely shut down, and it does completely um, go offline so that CarPlay disconnects. Now for the second one, I talked about connecting to Bluetooth and let's swing the camera around here real quick. I talked about connecting to Bluetooth and I was trying to connect to the same device that was connected on, on this to the phone Bluetooth wise. But what I figured out is it's not the same. So if you can see, see if I can get that to focus a little bit here. Let me see if I can get this to focus. So anyway, what I learned is that it's not the same connection to connect from this device to the car as it is to connect from this device to your phone. The, the connection to the car is the TLS instrument that is listed in the Bluetooth area. It looks like it's a phone connection, not a Bluetooth connection. So that was throwing me off, but I was able to finally get it to connect to that. Um, after a few tries, it connected and then everything seemed to work. So now every all my music goes through the CarPlay device into the phone or into the car I should say and then I hear it but I just wanted to answer those two questions before I finish editing this video and get it out to the masses well, let's look at a few features I like on this one as I pause the Fox News we don't need to hear the news but as we go through this screen you can see it scrolls through it has the car on the side it has the the main display there if we go back here I can see messages and maps and everything on here that I like I really like that it has audible on here because I use audible to listen to books but if you click on this car button it brings you back to the main car screen now it, it'll show you the blank screen until you put it in drive so let's go ahead and put it in drive and now you get this screen and there are multiple screens now this is a touch screen but you can use the scroll wheel as well to scroll through you can see I'm scrolling on the button watch up here it's scrolling through there so you can use the scroll wheel to scroll through there if you want to get on CarPlay you just click CarPlay shows your follow distance your tire pressure um, it goes back to setup which brings you to the main setup screen instead of holding the left scroll or the right scroll wheel left you can do it that way um, your theme so you can click on it and uh, look at the different themes that are in here I like this one but it has this theme here with the car in the center and the speedo on the side then it has this theme with the two dials I like this one so we're gonna leave it on this one and then you can see across the top it's got all my indicators my lights our hold uh, seatbelt warning all of those items and then um, so let's go back and let's select this one and then get out of this and then you keep scrolling you see Android Auto and Apple CarPlay so you can leave it on this screen or you can go to Apple CarPlay and then I really like this I mean you could have your driving on the side here so it shows everything about driving right here you could have Waze up uh, Sirius XM you can have just about everything up and then when I press play 
it just goes through my my car speakers so really really nice feature I really like this so far the one thing I didn't like about having Apple CarPlay in here before is my car sits so close that the Apple CarPlay would never disconnect we'll see if this one has that same issue but as of right now we're gonna leave this in here and let it run and let everything work I like that I can go to Audible. You can see I'm listening to the Elon Musk book. I have just uh, two hours and 52 minutes left of that. And then we will move on from that and go to our next book. But so far, this is really, really good product. Okay, so that'll do it for today's video. Uh, changing up this, this display to Apple CarPlay, not a very hard thing to do. I would put it on a, if I had a tracking or if I had a, a scale of one to five, five being the most difficult, one being like any idiot off the street can do it. I would put it at about a two to a three, two and a half. Really easy to do. The hardest part was just making sure that you don't bend those ribbons when you put them in and then getting everything connected. But that'll do it for today's video. Um, as always, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think. And I will have a link in the description to everything that I've shown in this video today. The screen, you can buy it with it already installed, or you can get the screen and the kit. I think the kit's about $100. But again, I'll have a link in the description down below to everything that you've seen in this video and we will also put a discount code down there for you to use so that you can use a discount code and get uh get a nice discount on these products and everything else that you put in your cart and purchase from our friends at tma today that'll do it for today thanks for watching as always get out go drive be safe have fun and we will catch you in the next video